All right, everybody. Well, welcome to um, session two of three of these discussions with Dan. We we decided to get back to these virtual meetings so that we could open up another line of communication with you all. And our last week one was so successful and uh, our numbers today have already uh, already exceeded last week's. So thank you for sharing the word. Thanks for spreading the word about these. Um, I got a ton of emails and texts. Uh, personally, I'm sure our staff got them as well uh, from staff members who who are just saying that they enjoy these opportunities. This is a great way for us to be able to share information with you all. Uh, we can use the normal paths, uh, email, text messages and such. Our newsletters, of course, we want you to follow, but this is just another way we can get in touch with you all. So our participant totals are still growing, but as they start to level out in the interest of time, we'll get started. So I was supposed to come to you live today from the Jake Owen stage up at Meadow Event Park, but I guess they got wind that I might sing. So that didn't work out as well today. We had a had some um, cell service and Wi-Fi issues up in Doswell, so we weren't sure that the connection would be as well as we wanted it, as strong as we wanted it for you. So I come to you today live from one of our high school facilities here in uh, off of Staples Mill Road in Glen Allen. It's Hermitage High School. Uh, right in front of me to my, to my left is um, a football stadium that will soon be back with full capacity and attendance working these events here on Friday nights. So nothing like Friday night football. So again, in the interest of bringing you these, uh, these, these virtual sessions from live places, uh, we wanted to bring it to you from just a different location uh, this time. So thanks again for joining us. You know, again, while we're doing these, another way to get in touch with you and have you able to ask questions with us. So there's a Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have any questions during tonight's session, uh, please feel free to use that Q&A feature. Our panelists here with us tonight, who I'll introduce in a second, uh, will be answering those throughout the night. And we'll, of course, we'll mention a few here on camera uh, when, you know, as time allows. We'll keep this meeting here tonight quick and brief. Uh, we are recording it again uh, for you guys to see later. Please note that if you go to rmcevents.com and you click on our media link, uh, you can view last week's session. Um, and then this one will be posted up here in a day or two. Dylan has just shared the link uh, for, that, um, for that video recording. And you can go catch last week's session on our website. So again, our participant link is still growing. So thanks for everybody for joining us. We'll dive right into, into, today's, uh, into today's agenda. Real quickly, I want to introduce some folks who are on this call with us today. Dylan Gordon is here from, a, from the business department to answer any questions you may have. BG is on this call to answer any questions you have from our HR department. Bob Palkovics is with us today. Um, Sam Langley is here from our operations division. Uh, Mark Sartori is here to answer any event-related questions from any region uh, that you might have. Greg Stubblefield is here with us from the Eastern Event Division. And Stacy Shippey is here with us from our Western Event Division. Again, as questions pop up in Q&A, we'll be able to help answer those questions for you as we go. Um, so today's agenda, before we get into that, just a reminder of what we talked about last week. If you weren't with us last week, again, please go to rmcevents.com, click on our media link, and grab that video and take a peek at it. But last week, we talked a little bit about reemergence from COVID protocol. And as we all start beginning to remove our face coverings, if you remember, if you're fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a face covering while you're at work. There are a few client sites that still require it, uh, but we'll communicate those to you. We went over that last week. We talked about our vaccination survey. If you haven't completed it yet and you have been fully vaccinated, we want you to complete that. I checked it this morning and we are creeping up on 1,000 staff members who have logged their vaccination details with us. So we really appreciate that. That's a, above the national state average, and it's really helping us as we prepare to launch into the fall. We talked about being prepared for the heat. Uh, the sun is hitting me right now, but it feels great. And as we get into these summer months, we want you to be real aware of, of drinking a bottle of water on the way to work and the signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion. We'll post some of those things in our, in our newsletters uh, that, that, that come out on Wednesdays, but we, we talked a little bit about heat preparation. And one of the most exciting things we talked about last week was the, our, our decision to remove the 1,500 hours cap for our employees. I want to make one clarification on that. I got a few emails on it. The, the ACA, the, the, the Affordable Care Act, did not change. It's still, if you cross 1,508 hours, you are still considered a full-time employee, and you must be offered health and dental benefits. We've just, as an organization, on your behalf, decided to remove that limit. Instead of capping our employees who want to work, who want to earn dollars, and quite frankly, we want them to work and we want you to earn dollars, we just basically said, go for it. Earn all the hours you want. Continue to work. Don't slow down. And if you cross the threshold in November when we have open enrollment, we'll offer you health benefits. If you, if you want to take them, great. If you don't, don't. But we just decided it wasn't really in your best interest or ours to hold you back any longer. 
So I, I'm really – I couldn't be more excited about that. I got a ton of feedback, all positive on that, uh, as we open up uh, that earnings opportunity for our staff. So really thrilled to recap that. Um, and then we closed last week with making sure you read our newsletters and, and follow us on social media, how you stay in the know. So let's move into this week's agenda because it's a really good one. I'm excited about it, and I think judging from our participant count, um, you guys are excited about it too because I think we're, we're breaking records on this virtual session here tonight with attendance. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about, here's the agenda for tonight. We're going to talk about our September and October calendar release dates, when you can expect to see those calendar release dates, both in our western region and in the eastern region. We're going to talk about a monthly return of those calendars. We're going to talk about a reverse scheduling day, the first in our company's history as we announce our reverse scheduling day that comes with a premium pay rate. And we'll talk about the opportunity you have beginning here in the next week or two to give yourself a pay raise which was so successful last year, we brought it back this year. Just by scheduling yourself for a certain number of events, you can give yourself a, an ongoing forever pay raise. And we've added a bonus kicker this year where you can truly give yourself a 20% pay raise. Um, so I'm really excited to get into that agenda here tonight. Uh, one of the reasons we're, we're really excited about these pay raises is because it has a triple effect. One, any pay raise is a good pay raise. Uh, number two, uh, when we talk about this premium day, which I'll leak it to you now, it's going to be September 11th. On 9-11, we're going to announce here today a premium date. You could earn 1.25, your pay rate, of your higher rate. So if you take this pay rate initiative, make more dollars an hour, you can make more money on 9-11 specifically. And then lastly, you keep this pay rate for every event. So not only can you make it all through the fall, you keep it all through next year until we do this again. And I'm going to show you an example of why it's important. Take advantage of it now in the fall and you reap the multiplying, accelerating benefits of it next year. It's just a great way to raise your pay rate. We're, we want you to make more money, and this is a great way to do it by, by we're helping us in the fall and taking the pay rate initiative throughout the course of next year. So the first topic I want to talk about is our September and October schedule release. Let's talk about the Western region first. Staff made these, on staff made, these uh, events will be released beginning on Wednesday, July 7th, and you'll have until Saturday, July 1st to go ahead and complete them. Um, so our September and October calendars, the fall calendars, will be released in the Western region beginning on Wednesday, July 7th. So please look for that release, and you'll have until the end of the month, Saturday, July 31st, uh, to get those completed. In the Eastern region, the September calendar will be released on Monday, July 12th, and the October calendar will be released on Monday, August 9th. So go ahead and put a pencil mark and a pen mark in your calendars for those. In the Eastern region, Monday, July 12th is the September release, and Monday, August 9th is the October release. And in the Western region, staff made calendars will be open for signups beginning on Wednesday, July 7th. Again, write those dates down. We'll release them again, and this video will be recorded that staff can share later on. And those dates will be important as we come back to the pay rate initiatives here in a minute. The second item we want to talk about tonight is a change in our schedule submission policy. Uh, for why the change for the last several years, we've been getting about 50 to 55% of our staff have been turning in a monthly calendar. We need those numbers to increase. So what we're doing is what's not, we don't, we don't think it's a big ask. Part of a job requirement with RMC events moving forward is simply to communicate with us once a month. So in the Western region, when staff make calendars go out, we ask that you, of course, we still have not changed our policy of expecting and asking for people to work on average two events per month. In the Eastern region, when the calendars come out, we're just asking for you to return those calendars. If you select one event, terrific. If you select 10 events, terrific. If it's not a good month for you and none of the events work out, that's okay too. There will be a box up top that says, I'm not available this month. You put your name in it, you put your email address in it, you click not available and you submit it. It's telling us that we are at least getting a schedule back from you. And, and we honestly don't think it's that big of an ask once a month to send that back. Now. Reminder, we do ask for an average of two events per month. That has never changed, but it's an average. We do not go through every single month and inactivate someone if they didn't work two events that month. We do look at it quarterly, and if you've been in that boat, you get the inactivity phone call or an email from our HR department once a quarter or every three or four months saying, hey, can you start submitting schedules again? That won't change. But again, the ask is simply to submit a schedule every month with your availability or your lack of availability. Just submit it so we can start getting a higher turnout on our, on our schedule submission. We think it'll result in higher you know, numbers of people working events, 
and it'll really help us out, especially through this fall season. If you have any questions on that, you can contact our event departments directly. Contact Greg in the East or contact Stacy or Patrick in the West, and you can ask, we'll answer all your questions about schedule submission as they do operate a little differently in both of those markets. Our third topic for tonight is one that I'm actually pretty excited about. It's the first time in our company history we've ever tried it, and we're offering you a bonus, uh, some bonus dollars in return. But this fall, we have an extremely busy day. It's September 11th, Saturday, September 11th. And I know I'll miss an event or two, but on this day, not only is NASCAR and Cowan in Richmond, but I believe JMU football is home, UVA football is home, William & Mary football is home, University of Richmond football is home. And if there's any other school in Virginia that we work that has a football game, I'm sure that they'll find a way to play on that day. So for the first time ever, we're offering a reverse scheduling day. Here's how it'll work. In the West, you'll receive a scheduling request to work on that day through staff meet. You'll need to decline it if you're unable to work that day. You will receive phone calls, emails, and text messages if you take no action on it. But we'll try to reach out to you to make sure you understand that we're reverse scheduling everybody that day and assigning an event at either UVA or JMU football would be my guess um, in that region in the West. And we're simply asking for everyone's help. Of course, if you decline the event, call off policy will stay the same. The no call, no call, no call, no show policy will stay the same. But we're simply attempting to get as many folks to help us on Saturday, September 11th as we can with this reverse scheduling day. In the East, when schedules come out for September, you will be given the option to pick an event that you like. Same as in the West, you can pick UVA or JMU. In the East, you can pick the event you like. If you don't select an event for Saturday, September 11th, you will be assigned an event. And then over the summer, we'll make an attempt to call everybody, email everybody, and catch up and make sure we're doing the best we can to help confirm. But I'll un understand that scheduled is still scheduled. And of course, if you can't make the event, you'll just need to contact our office and have your name removed from it. Now, that's a big ask to have a reverse scheduling day and just say, look, it's a big day. We want to see everybody. We need your help. So what are we going to do in return? We're designating a premium event day. So if you take, up, take us up on these initiatives, raise your pay rate. On that day, 9-11, every single person that works for us will get 1.25 times their multiplier on their, on their pay rate, on their hourly rate that day. Uh, we just feel it's a way for us to say thank you for, for you saying thank you to us. And we, we need you on that Saturday, but we want to make sure that we pay you that premium rate as well to say thank you for and, and giving this reverse scheduling day a shot. So, again, if you have questions on that, I would, again, email Mark or, or Patrick or Greg, depending on what region you're in, and we'll answer all those questions for you. We're simply trying to get as many people on 9-11 as we can and see if this reverse scheduling day helps us out with scheduling and in return offer a premium pay rate for it. The next uh, thing we'll talk about today, really the, the final issue is pay rate increases. And it's a super exciting one for me to share. I saved it for last on purpose. Um, we're gonna break it down in the East and West as well, but here's your chance to give yourself a pay raise months in advance of our organization's pay raise. We, you and I both know that in 2022, we'll go through our next pay rates again, and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we increase our base pay rate starting next year. We're going to give you an opportunity not only to get there first, but to lock in an advanced rate for all of next year. So in the Western region, let's start with Charlottesville. In Charlottesville, to raise our base pay rate, if you're a $10 an hour earner, you can raise your pay rate on your own to $11 an hour by simply signing up for five of UVA's football games. There's seven home games this year. Select five on staff mate, automatically raise your pay rate to 11. Should you choose them all, so all seven UVA home games, you'll raise your hourly pay rate to $12 an hour, a 20% pay rate increase. And again, if you take advantage of it in the fall, that $12 an hour stays with you for every single event, every JPJ, every Sprint Pavilion, every travel event, everywhere you go, that pay rate stays with you throughout this fall and into next year. And keep in mind, we'll come back to this. When we get to this again, because it was so successful two years ago and you asked for us to bring it back, so we did. When we do this again, you continue to accelerate that pay rate. We'll talk about that in a second. But taking advantage of it this fall is a great opportunity here in Charlottesville. Sign up for five football games, pay yourself 11 bucks an hour, get there months ahead of the rest of the organization. Work seven for seven, give yourself a 20% raise and make 12 bucks an hour everywhere you go. In Harrisonburg, your numbers are a little different. You have one less football game. So it's in Harrisonburg, if you sign up for five of JMU's six football games, you give yourself a dollar raise to 11 an hour. And if you sign up for seven of seven JMU football games, which is the six regular season and one postseason, because we are so confident 
in the Duke's football program, they're going to have a home playoff game. Uh, sign up for them all and give yourself a 20% increase to $12 an hour. And that sticks with you. Every single time you get in a van and travel somewhere, every single time you work an event, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, that pay rate stays with you. A uh, really good opportunity to bump your to bump your pay rate. Remember, that Western schedule on StaffMate comes out on July 7th, and you have until July 31 to take advantage of this offer. On Monday, August 2nd, our Western region is going to turn those names into business, and those people are automatically going to get pay rate increases for the entire fall and going into 2022, months in advance of everyone else. So by the end of July, get those schedules in, select your five football games, select all seven, and take advantage of this 20% increase. Then when you work on 9-11, you will not only get the 20% increase, but you will get 1.25 times your rate when you work on 9-11 on premium day, another way to put some dollars in your pocket. In the Eastern region, a little bit different since we're not focused on primary football clients. We have a lot of different events in the East. So the, the, uh, the incentive program, it goes like this. In the Eastern region, on your September calendar, when you choose two Saturdays in September, and two Saturdays in October, you will automatically make yourself eligible for the $11 an hour rate. If you choose all Saturdays in September and October, you will take advantage of the 20% increase and automatically take advantage of that $2 bump. So in, uh, in the Richmond region, in the Tidewater region, two Saturdays in September, two in October, you get the 11 bump. And in the uh, Eastern region, if you want the $12 bump, just check off all the Saturdays in September and October, and you can take advantage of the 20% bump. A couple things about that. We're not going to monitor it every single day. So if you sign up for all of them and you call off for a particular Saturday, we may not find that we're not going to audit it every Monday. We will look at it at times throughout the season and we'll look at it at the end of the season and we'll make sure that, that, um, that, you, that you keep that rate. We want you to work those Saturdays. Look, let's face it. We need you on those Saturdays, but we want it in return. We want to offer you a 20% pay raise to do it. Uh, we just think it's a great way to put dollars back in your pocket. Two notes about that. I just saw the question pop up from Double D. It's a great question. Um, supervisors will be handed independently, much like you have in the past. You'll receive a letter, but the incentive is the same. So when you submit your schedule, supervisors, you pick those two dates in September, two dates in October, or you pick your five football games and your seven football games, you will make yourself eligible for level increases on your supervisor tier. So yes, it does apply to supervisors, but because the supervisor rates are in tiers, you'll move up by levels based upon the level one, level two of what you choose, uh, much like the staff does. So great question. Uh, and you'll be individually contacted via email or with a letter, um, but we are gonna move our supervisors up the same way. We want you to work, uh, sign up for those Saturdays and you move up on those levels. Here's a perfect example of why I'm excited about this. We had staff members in the Richmond region that we needed to work in the external program during COVID. We needed you to cover those shifts and you needed the hours. So when people committed to work in the external program, we gave them an hourly dollar rate of $11 an hour. We gave them an extra dollar to commit to go downtown to work a lot of these events. Well, because those folks took us up on that, if you're one of those 100 plus staff that did it, when you meet this first requirement and you select two Saturdays in September and two Saturdays in October, you'll move to the $12 level. And if you meet the next requirement by all Saturdays in October and all Saturdays in September, you'll move to the $13 level. So my point is this, Take advantage of these pay incentives now. Work these Saturdays in the fall. And not only will you reap the benefits of that pay rate all fall and all next year, but when we do this again, you'll continue to place yourself steps ahead on the earnings. And it's what we want. I mean, we need you in the fall, but we want to pay you more money. And this is a great way to do it. We're really excited about it. Our staff has worked really hard to figure out a way to, to incentivize our staff to make more money and figure out a way to get it done. And this is an excellent way to do it. Um, again, take advantage of these now and then multiply and accelerate yourself so much quicker when we do this again, because if you show up like you did two years ago when we were last year, when we did this, we will come back and do it again because you're telling us that you want the additional earnings and you're willing to work the Saturdays to do it. And it's a success. It's a successful model for us all. So in recap tonight, so again, we recorded this, so please make sure you go back and view it and share it. If you'd like, we'll get the questions in just a second. So use the Q and a feature if you can. We talked about um, our September and October calendar releases in the Western region, July 7th, get it done by July 31 in the Eastern region, July 12 for September and August 9th for October. We talked about the, 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 the returning of a monthly schedule being part of a job expectation. 
We talked about 9-11 being a reverse scheduling day. Everyone's going to get scheduled for an event that day. You still get to pick first, but we're going to come back and schedule everybody. And in return, we're going to say thank you with a 1.25 times multiplier so you make more money that day. As you help us out, we'll help you out. And then we talked about the pay rate initiatives. Again, five football games in the West. Give yourself a dollar raise to 11. Seven for seven in the West. Go ahead and take a 20% raise and keep it for every event. In the East, two Saturdays in September, two in October, get you a dollar. And every Saturday in those months gets you 20% raise to $2, which would be 12 bucks an hour. And you can capitalize on that by rolling it forward. I know it was a lot to cover, and I know I talk fast, but I, uh, I value your time tonight. I really appreciate you joining. If I wish I could show you this participant number, it's hundreds of individuals on with us tonight. So thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to click on the Q&A real quick, and we'll try to uh, grab a couple of these questions. Great question. What if you are already at $11 an hour? You will accelerate to 12 by meeting the first level, and you'll accelerate to $13 an hour by meeting the second level. Super excited about that. Um, as excited about removing the hour cap on 1500 hours I'm, I'm i'm super excited to start getting our pay rates in this 12 13 dollar an hour range and i promise you this we are going to continue to move them upward so capitalize on it now so that you're at those high steps when we continue to capitalize on it just like these folks are moving from 11 to 13 dollars an hour at this opportunity the next question is when is our next class for recruits I'll let Bob go ahead and type an answer in there, but I will tell you this, we're doing a monthly. So if you've got folks who want to come to work for us, please email hr at rmcevents.com and give us their information. Ask them to fill out an application. Put your name down as a referral so we can thank you, but please send them in. We are holding classes every single month, sometimes twice a month. I got a chance to meet 20 of our new class members this past Saturday. And it was excellent. It was awesome. So I know Bob's typing an answer in there for you, Ralph, and we'll get you that answer. Uh, Carolyn, uh, I see you said uh, you're working on July 7th at 7.30 a.m. What time will they post? Uh, we'll try to get an answer for you in there from East or West, whoever that is. Uh, a panelist can go ahead and answer that question. Does working an ESS shift count as well on Saturday? Great question. So the question is, if I work in external, not in events, but I work on a Saturday, absolutely. If you work in the East, two Saturdays, September, two in October, you're eligible for the $1. And if you work them all, you're eligible for two. Great question. Uh, any Saturday help we can get in the fall is, is absolutely uh, uh, part of the program. Question, if you're locked in and you're already working at an external program, this question is from New Kent or VCU, and you're a supervisor, how does that work if you're already committed to Saturday? It counts. Uh, we just want you working on a Saturday anywhere you qualify. Uh, make that note on your calendar, and, and you, you qualify, you get the pay rate increase. So thank you very much for that. Here's a really good question. If you work a night shift and overnight, do you keep that rate plus the additional dollar or two? Awesome question. We are in the process of raising our overnight rates as well. So, you know, Dan, to answer your question, the answer is yes. You'll hear very soon our overnight rate is going to go up as well. Um, it will be above those rates. So we, we, will, we will continue to pay a shift differential for those overnight shifts. Really, really good question. Um, ambassador and UVA hospital parking people, the, the answer there is exactly the same. If you are in the event division and you cross over and work in external, you take your rate with you. Uh, so thank you very much. If you are already being paid an accelerated rate in the West to work those that is in above that, that 12 or $13 an hour rate, you will maintain that higher rate. So that is a, another great question and a good answer. Um, great question here from a long time staff member. Good to see you, sir. But signing up for football games does that include high school games so we want you to sign up for all those high school games on friday nights the pay incentive is for saturdays so if those events occur on a saturday you'll meet that requirement those are the days that we uh that we need the most help with and the incentive is uh for those saturdays but great great question will you be sending this informa information out in email and print you betcha we're going to publish it in the newsletter that comes out on wednesdays and we'll absolutely keep tagging that to emails and trying to promote this as much as we can. We want to get the, that word out. Uh, so certainly it'll be in print in our newsletters, uh, but we'll get that word out in print as well. Um, and we appreciate that question. The more we can do to share this information, the better. So that went through all of our questions in the queue. It's uh, 27 minutes after the hour. We have three minutes left before we wanted to break up. So we value your time. If you've got any more questions, go ahead and throw them in Q&A. 
the beautiful part about this is if you don't have a question right now and you think of one later, we're all here for you. You see everybody on this screen. Email Stacy, email Patrick, email Mark, email Greg if you've got some event related questions. Uh, if you've got operations or apparel related questions, Sam is here um, and you can ask uh, Sam and, uh, or JPV an ops question. Palco's here from an HR perspective. You can absolutely, um, absolutely ask those questions anytime you want. So again, last call for questions in the Q&A. Uh, here's the, well, another question popped in. If you don't get the newsletter, that means we don't have your correct email address. So if you're not getting our newsletter, if you wouldn't mind, reach out to us so we can verify your email address. And then of course, we'll promote this in emails and text as well. So um, if you don't, if we don't have your correct email address, it's gonna be hard for us to communicate with you. So let us know, uh, let your office know so we can get a hold of you. Uh, some questions are popping in the queue here. Will there be events every Saturday for Tidewater to take advantage of the 20%? That is a spectacular question. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. William Mary and Christopher Newport football play on different Saturdays, but also there are so many events in the Richmond area that we're willing to pay travel for. Uh, such a great question. Um, and if you're coming to Richmond to help us out from Tidewater, we'll pay you those travel rates and CNU, William Mary football and such. If for some crazy odd reason there's not you will absolutely be excused for that Saturday. If there's just no events we can offer you, uh, Brett will handle that, I'm sure, case by case basis. But there is really not a Saturday where we don't need some help. But absolutely, if there's a Saturday where for some reason you make yourself available and we can't use you, you'll qualify just by making yourself available. Remember, the 20% increase for every Saturday in the fall is only based on you making yourself available to work. You're telling us, I'll take this event. For some reason, if there's nothing there, but you're saying you are, you qualify. Uh, if your shift begins on Friday and runs into Saturday, JMU Madison Hotel, that's a great question. I'm going to let Mark type that answer in there. He's typing it right now. Uh, Gene, super question. Uh, if you get the stump award, you stump me on that one, but Mark, uh, Mark and Stacy will get that one straight. Great question, uh, Gene. Um, how does this people... How does this work with people who work in Enrico? You can work any event on Saturday and the pay rate still uh, still takes a, takes effect. How do you see events in the Richmond area? Terrific. Uh, I would, if you're in the Charlottesville region or the Harrisonburg region and you wanna work events in the Richmond area, you're gonna see them promoted through StaffMate. So I see Stacy typing that answer in there. She's way smarter than me. So we're gonna let her go ahead and type that answer in there for you and we'll get it back to you. But we will show those events to you probably through StaffMate or through emails or through that beautiful newsletter she works so hard to create and does a great job with it uh question is does working parking count as working an event you betcha matter of fact you'll probably be out there with me if we're parking cars somewhere so i, I appreciate that question and are there incentives for traveling through the tunnel there are so terrific question coming from tidewater if you're on one side of the tunnel or the other please email brett and make sure you catch up on the travel tunnel pay. We still do have that travel tunnel pay uh, to get through there. And then Dan, your question on working um, overnights from one Saturday into the next, I'm sure Mark or um, Greg will jump on and answer that for you. Uh, and we'll get, we'll get that answer to you. Some really great, great questions. Uh, keep those questions coming folks. Email, reach out to Patrick, Stacy, Mark and Greg from the event division and we'll get answers to you. Um, I just want to close by saying our attendee count was so impressive today. I'm humbled by it. And I think what we've talked about in the last week or two with removing an hour cap and finding a way to get you a 20% pay rate increase overnight, you can flip the switch just by scheduling yourself for this stuff and overnight give yourself a 20% pay rate increase and carry it with you forever so that next time we have this conversation, you're starting from that level and multiplying on top of that. Um, if you've got questions on how that works, you can reach out to me anytime you want. Dan at rmcevents.com. Um, I'll see you at events. Um, and, and make sure that you're taking advantage. I can't, I can't stress it enough. This is a really good opportunity to just put more money in your bank account. Next week, we'll be back Thursday, July 1st. I'm going to try to do it live from the Diamond. So good Lord, I don't know what party might have in store, but I'll try to do it live from the Diamond. We'll talk about the fall football kickoff on 9-4. We'll talk about 9-11. We'll talk about the State Fair. We'll announce some cool concerts that are coming this fall and this winter. And we'll talk about the Dominion Energy Classic. 
Join us again next Thursday. We'll come back and we'll answer and recap these questions again. A great question came in and we'll close on this. When do these pay rates take effect? They take effect September 1. So in the Western region, you get your calendar staff make gets released on July 7th in the Western region, get it completed by July 31. On August 2, your name will be turned into business. Your pay rate will go up on September 1. You work an event on September 4th, football kickoff weekend, you're earning the higher dollars beginning September 1. In the Eastern region, turn your September calendars in, turn your October calendars in. After Greg and Angie process them all, they will turn in a list to business of all the people who qualified for level one, which is two Saturdays in each month, or level two, which is every Saturday, your pay rates will immediately be flipped upward and you'll begin to get those effective September 1. Great question, I appreciate you bringing that up. September 1, these higher pay rates will take effect. Remember, you'll get them for September, October, November, December, and all the way through 2022. And when we have these pay rate initiatives next year, you'll be starting from a higher block. Anybody who does not take advantage of these pay rates will start from whatever our base rate block is, and you will take advantage of the higher base rate block. So uh, it's an awesome opportunity. Questions, of course, send it to us. It's four minutes past our time. We love you. We miss you. I cannot wait to see you at events coming up in the fall. Send us any questions. A quick thank you to the panelists for taking time out of their day and joining us tonight. Thanks for being here, y'all. Appreciate it. And uh, y'all have a great evening and have fun. Uh, go nuts next week as we come live to you from the diamond for a squirrels game. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.